Hey friends, I am back with another dividend stock investing video. I want to share in the video today an investment that is yielding 3.62%. I am purchasing this particular investment in larger quantities right now. I'm so excited. It's my number one favorite bond of all time. Of course, this is a dividend stock investing channel, so I'm going to compare this bond to two of my favorite dividend stocks that I am purchasing right now. I actually believe both of the dividend stocks are trading at value territories. And so I want to analyze the three and see which one ends up ahead. And so I'm really excited because a lot of you may remember this studio setup. Please put in the comments below if you remember this studio setup. It's been a while. The difference though is this setup right now is in Idaho. And so I'm broadcasting from Idaho now. We're here full time, but I'm in the same setup because I'm the same old G like genuine. Get ready, everyone, for a really exciting dividend stock investing video. Welcome to PPC Ian. This is Dividend Stock Investing for Everyone. All right, everyone. So which investment am I talking about that is yielding 3.62%? As you can see on the screen in front of you right now, that investment is the 20-year U.S. Treasury bond. This is a bond that is almost risk-free. The only risk there, in my opinion, is the government defaulting on its debt, which would be really, really bad <laughs> if that happened and unlikely given that it is the U.S. government, very strong government. And the reason this bond is yielding so much and the interest rate just keeps going up is because of inflation. And because inflation is high right now, the Fed funds rate keeps going up. The Federal Reserve is increasing the Fed funds rate in an effort to slow down inflation. And as interest rates go up, interest rates across the board are increasing. Mortgage rates, Fed funds rate, uh, borrowing rates. Uh, it's going to be more expensive for companies to service their debt. And it's getting more expensive for governments to service their debt like the U.S. government. And so we're seeing a 3.62% interest rate on the 20-year treasury. Now, interest is paid semi-annually. It's possible to purchase this bond, this security, directly from the U.S. government on treasurydirect.gov. It is taxed as ordinary income on a federal level in the United States, but it's exempt from state income tax for those of us filing taxes in the United States. Now, I really like the 20-year bond because it seems to have hit a sweet spot in terms of yield, but also I love the duration of this bond because over the course of holding it for 20 years, I get interest semi-annually that I can either use to reinvest in other bonds, I can use it to invest in stocks like the Home Depot and Starbucks, which are the two stocks I want to talk about today. I could use the interest to pay bills for my early retirement. And I can also use that interest for just about any purpose. But what's so exciting is after those uh, 20 years have elapsed, and I'm in my 40s right now. When these 20 years have elapsed, I'll be in my 60s, hopefully enjoying a nice retirement. Or if I am still working, it's only going to be on projects like this that I love so much. But what's so exciting is when that bond matures, I will get the... Um, face value of it, whatever money I put into it. And so it's guaranteed by the U.S. government. Over the course of those 20 years, the value of the bond can fluctuate. But as long as I hold total maturity, I get the money back that I put into it. And I get a lump sum at the end, all the money I put into it. But what's exciting is because of that 20-year duration, I'm in my 40s. I know a lot of subscribers here are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. 20 years out, kind of puts, um, puts me into my retirement years and I can use that lump sum to supplement dividend income if I need to, if I need to fill some gaps that the dividend stock income doesn't quite cover, or I can just use it for a fun splurge. Maybe my wife and I, we go on a fun vacation to Europe, um, or if we just don't need the money, maybe we could invest it at that time in dividend stocks. So I think 20 years really is a sweet spot. As you can see on the screen in front of you right now, um, you can purchase these securities in a variety of places. 
services you can purchase it through your traditional broker but also directly from the government on treasurydirect.gov and you can see on Treasury Direct that they have auctions all the time and the auction that I'm watching right now is the one coming up on June 16th um, or actually the announcement date was on June 16th the auction date is on June 22nd the issue date is on June 30th and that's for the 19 year 11 month bond almost 20 years it's a 19 year 11 month because I, I think yeah there it is it's a reopening they're reopening an issue there and so it's exciting just to see that um, Interest rates are up, and all of the time there are auctions on Treasury Direct, and I've been participating in a large amount of these auctions. Now, if you don't know already, I have a Patreon, and on my corner patron tier, I, I share my complete bond portfolio and my complete stock portfolio, and I share the percentage allocation of each position and how my bond portfolio compares to stock portfolio in terms of percentage allocation. I'll link to that in the pinned comment below if you're interested in signing up for Patreon on the corner patron tier, but my corner patrons, they know that I own treasury bonds, all kinds of treasury bonds. Now, I own the uh, two-year, three-year, five-year, seven-year, 10-year, 20-year, 30-year. And what I'd also like to say is I do own the I-bonds and the uh, EE savings bonds as well. But what's so exciting about treasuries in contrast to the savings bonds is the treasuries pay interest semi-annually that can be used for living expenses. And you can put a um, basically unlimited amount of money into them whereas the savings bonds are capped at 10000 per year and the interest isn't paid as cash flow, it's paid upon maturity. And so it's more of a lump sum at the end. So it's not as practical for those of us trying to live off of passive income. And I'm already using some of my passive income to pay bills right now. And so what I want to do in the video today is I want to go through an analysis where I compare the 20-year treasury to some favorite stocks, Starbucks and the Home Depot that I'm also purchasing right now. If you enjoy the video so far, please go ahead and smash the like button. If you're as excited as I am that I'm in the studio set up again here doing these videos, I uh, thank you all, by the way, uh, for being patient. I know I didn't do a video last week. I really wanted to, but our um, kids, they finally got out of school for the school year, and then we made our final drive up here to Idaho, and now we are here in Idaho full-time, and um, we've left California, and so we're excited to be here, and I will have a more regular video schedule now that we got settled in. But I wanted to do a video sooner, but it took um, a few days just to get set up here, honestly, and um, I have a lot more set up to do. Unboxing, so many boxes, so much stuff, but uh, thankfully the um, big part of the move is done with, and so now it's time to get back to business back to YouTube. So thank you for hanging in there. And um, by the way, don't forget to subscribe because I will have more videos on the way all the time. As you can see in front of you on the screen right now, I want to share my analysis. And so in the analysis that you can see right now, I am comparing the Home Depot, Starbucks, and um, the 20-year bond. And so basically, Home Depot is trading at $283. I love the Home Depot at these levels. The forward PE is in the 17s this year, 16s next year. It is a starting yield of 2.68%. Now, I want to really draw notice to that because 2.68% is about one full percentage point less than the 20-year treasury. Now, worth noting, the tax efficiency of dividends, qualified dividends in the United States is better than the ordinary income on the federal level from the 20-year um, bond. But for the purposes of this analysis, I'm putting taxes aside, but that is an important consideration as well. But I just want to share off the bat right now, Home Depot, for those who are looking to use passive income for expenses right away, it is a full percentage point lower than the 20-year bond. And obviously, the Home Depot carries some level of risk because we know our economy right now is most likely headed into a recession, probably a bad one uh, because of these high interest rates, because of inflation. The uh, Fed funds rate is just going to go way up, and it's going to have a ripple effect, in my opinion, across the entire economy. Now, payout ratio on the Home Depot is 45.9%. The dividend, though, is growing really quickly at about 16% per year. Market cap, almost $300 billion. Now, the important, important thing I want to share 
about dividend stock investing versus bond investing is dividend stocks, core dividend stocks, the best dividend stocks tend to grow the dividend over time. So Home Depot on average is growing at about 16% per year. So whereas the starting yield is lower than that bond and that bond yield will never grow, it will always be 3.621% for those locking it in at the current price. Dividend growth on the Home Depot will increase the yield on cost over time. And so I have a dividend growth model there at the bottom. It implies no dividend reinvestment investment. I'm not reinvesting dividends. Well, I am in real life, but in this model, I'm not reinvesting dividends in the Home Depot. I'm using those dividends for um, expenses, for, for paying living expenses. But if we just do a simple dividend model, dividend growth model, what will the yield on cost be assuming different dividend growth rates? Well, if the dividend growth at the Home Depot stays up around 16%, Basically, it takes three years to reach the yield on cost of the bond, because if we just keep increasing the dividend each year by 16%, after three years, the dividend yield on cost, um, not reinvesting dividends, with reinvesting dividends, it would get there even quicker, but not reinvesting dividends is using dividends to pay living expenses. It matches the bond after about three years. But we all know that this economy is headed into rough times. We all know that... We probably can't use data from the past at this point to predict the future. Yes, the Home Depot over the last five years has been growing the dividends at 16% per year on average. Yes, the payout ratio is pretty reasonable at less than 50%. Yes, it's a thriving business, but we also know that this Home Depot success has been driven by the housing boom. And the housing boom has been driven by low interest rates. We know with interest rates going up that most likely there is going to be a slowdown in the housing market. Therefore, there will probably be a slowdown at the Home Depot. Now, people obviously need the Home Depot to service their existing house. And if people are staying in their existing house longer, maybe they're making renovations and it will boom that side of the business. That being said, I'm cautious. I don't think the dividend growth will maintain at 16% at the Home Depot. Now, I hope it does, but I think it's really important to share this with the community because so many people are modeling, oh, well, you know, bonds are bad in 3.6%. That's nothing because my yield on cost will surpass that really quickly um, with a stock like the Home Depot. But honestly, it may not be three years. It may be longer. And that's why I like to have a diversified portfolio. Now, stocks will always comprise the huge lion's share of my portfolio, but bonds are having an increasing component because of the high interest rates and the low risk, which helps portfolio volatility. But as you can see in front of you right now, with the Home Depot example, at a 10% in, uh, increase per year on average, let's just say they can't maintain 16% uh, dividend growth anymore. It goes down to 10%. It takes now about four years, just over four years to match the bond. And so the interest I'm receiving on the bond, the 3.6%, that comes from day one paid semi-annually. With the dividend stocks at the Home Depot, I can get a 3.6% yield on cost, uh, and I'm not reinvesting dividends here for purposes of this model. It will take about four years. And to be fair, I'm not reinvesting dividends on the bond model either. I'm just saying 3.6, and I'm taking the interest there from the bond as... Um, and paying living expenses with it in this hypothetical model. Now, I put a box around the next model, because realistically, this is where I see the Home Depot's dividend growth headed. I see it headed to about 7% per year on average. I don't think it's going to be 16%. I don't think it's going to be 10%. I think it's going to be more like 7%. And you can see on this model that it takes about five and a half years, just between year five and year six, to match the bond. And so, again, a lot of investors on this channel a lot of them, honestly, are at that retirement age right now, or they're, or they're young, but they want to retire right now. The reason I like the 20-year bond is it gives 3.62% interest from day one, and the risk is very, very low because it's backed by the U.S. government. And we can see from the model that it takes between five and six years from the Home Depot, which does carry risk, most likely to reach that same 3.62% yield on cost. Now, my position in the Home Depot is very large. My corner patrons know that as well. It's one that I've added to in a major way. And so don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to put down the Home Depot. 
but I'm trying to be realistic here on this channel to provide a holistic view of personal finance and income investing. And I'm just trying to share that this concept of yield on cost, it's very powerful, especially for those that have one decade, two decades, or even more time on their side. But for those who are a little closer to retirement or those who just want, um, income now to supplement their job income so they can scale down hours worked at the job. You start looking at these trade-offs between stocks and bonds, and there are attractive qualities to treasuries at current yield levels, in my humble opinion. Now, as you can see on the screen in front of you right now, I also include on the screen a 5% dividend growth model as well. And you can see with 5% dividend growth, it takes about seven years to reach the 3.6% yield on cost with the Home Depot. I don't think their dividend will be growing at 5%. I think it's going to be closer to 7%. Now I wanna look at Starbucks, which is another stock that you can see on the screen that I have been purchasing in a major way. And uh, with Starbucks, the price per share is $72. It's my number two largest position right now. It's probably gonna be number one once the stock rebounds over $100 again. I'll include a link in the pinned comment below to my last video on Starbucks. And you can see the forward PE is 25 this year, 21 next year. That's reasonably low for Starbucks. And you can see the starting yield is also like the Home Depot's. It's about 2.69%, a full percentage point lower than the 20 year bond. And so what is worth um, mentioning here is again, these dividend investments, I love them. They're huge. These are massive top core positions in my portfolio, but to reach the yield of the 20 year bond, which carries next to no risk, we are looking at a waiting game it's going to take some time. It's going to take yield on cost to get there. And this is the first time I've seen something like this in at least five years, because we all know interest rates have been at historic lows. Now, Starbucks is increasing the dividend per year on average by 14%. And you can see if they keep doing that, it will take about three and a half years or three and a quarter years to basically reach the yield of the bond. But we all know Starbucks right now is having a lot of issues. They're having issues with inflation. They're having issues with unions. They're having issues in China with the pandemic forcing lockdowns. I do not think that Starbucks is going to be able to increase the dividend by 14% on average for the next five years. I think the increases are going to be a lot lower. So as you can see on the screen right now, I don't need to go through every scenario. But what I do with Starbucks is I put a box around the 5% uh, dividend growth. I think on average over the next, say, 5, 10 years, Starbucks is going to slow dividend growth down probably to about 5%. Maybe it'll be higher once they kind of get out of the funk that they're in right now. And honestly, I'm buying them right now because they are going through difficult times. And as they go through difficult times, I like to be a contrarian investor and buy value. I've talked about that at length in my last video. But you can see at a 5% dividend growth rate, it takes about seven years to match the starting yield of the 20-year bond. And so the last thing that you see on the screen, I know the, the uh, print here is very small, um, is the uh, recent 20-year auction that I participated in. I secured an interest rate of 3.25%. And what ended up happening, though, is the true yield is a little higher. It's a 3.269%. And the reason is the results of the auction are not always uh, issuing these bonds at the face value. And so for every $100 of face value of bond, I actually ended up paying 99.42. Hence, the true yield is a little bit higher than the coupon rate of the bond, which was 3.25%. So a lot going on here. But the conclusion, quite frankly, is I think all three of these investments are amazing. I love the 20-year bond. I love Starbucks. I love the Home Depot. I generally will skew towards the dividend stocks because my investment time horizon is greater than 10 years. It's actually forever. But when I realistically will start be really relying on passive income in a major way a lot more than I am right now is probably at least 10 years in the future. That being said, I am trying to enjoy life a little bit more these days. That was part of the reason behind the move is to slow down a little bit, enjoy life more, go in the great outdoors a little bit more. And so that's why I am also leaning on bonds right now because they provide passive income that I can use right now. And quite frankly, the dividend stocks do too as well. 
But with the Home Depot and Starbucks, I'm reinvesting all of my dividends. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think about treasuries right now? What do you think about dividend stocks like the Home Depot and Starbucks? I would love to know. Before I go today, I do have some more uh, ground I want to cover, just some fun uh, topics I was writing down, some comparisons between stocks and bonds, because I know bonds are newer to this channel. So I want to share with all of you on the screen right now. And as you can see in front of you, I just want to share like, how do stocks, core dividend stocks, good dividend stocks, not junk, um, but really good stocks, uh, how do they compare to treasury bonds? Loss of capital, very possible with dividend stocks in the short run, even some possibility in the long run. Treasury bonds, very unlikely if held to maturity unless the U.S. government defaults on their debt. Yield on cost, it's going to be uh, higher for dividend stocks in the long run. That's something that the model doesn't show. If I hold Starbucks and the Home Depot for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, my yield on cost will be way higher way, way higher than the treasury bonds. And that's why I am a dividend stock investor. I've done a lot of videos on that, especially in my early days here on the channel. Treasury bonds, the yield on cost, it's higher in the short run, but as compared to dividend stocks, a lot lower in the long run. Cash flow for dividend stocks is generally quarterly in the U.S., semi-annually for the notes and bonds um, in the U.S., Tax efficiency, it's generally more efficient with qualified dividends. They're taxed as long-term cap gains. Treasury bonds are not quite as efficient, but thankfully they are not taxed on a state level. Time horizon, I would say dividend stocks, I think they're generally better for long-term investors. Treasury bonds, they're generally better for those wanting retirement, wanting cash flow right now. Both play a role in my portfolio, though, because I have a blended portfolio that uh, has many players on the team that performs many different functions. But I like having some cash flow right now that I can rely on upon because it allows me to start automating some of my expenses right now and enjoying life because life is not um, either or. Life can be a blend of strategies and quite frankly, a lot of us, we don't want to just retire and shut off uh, a job, but we want to scale the hours back and something like these treasury bonds can help scale the hours of a job back. Let's keep going. As you can see in front of you right now, the next thing I want to share is just risk tolerance. Stocks are generally better for those with the higher risk tolerance bonds, lower risk tolerance. Ease of buying, I would say they're equal. You can buy stocks very easily with brand name brokers. You can buy these treasury bonds and participate in the auctions very easily on treasurydirect.gov. Uh, you can also purchase these bonds through brokers as well. Um, I have a few thoughts as well that I um, want to share with all of you at this time. Some of these thoughts are a repeat, but I spent a lot of time preparing this video last night, so I want to make sure to go through all the content. If you do enjoy the video so far, if you smash the like button, it means the world to me. It helps me uh, scale this channel here on YouTube and uh, reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers at some point. But as you can see in front of you right now, just a few notes. Um, what I would say is for the first time in year, treasury rates, they're looking exciting. Um, just because other investors think that treasury bonds are boring and they don't talk about them, it doesn't mean they're bad. Um, I personally think they're great. I value sleeping well at night. And honestly, there's nothing that allows a sleep well at night factor like treasury bonds. It's impossible to time the market. So one of the things that I do with bonds is I have staggering maturity dates and that just earmarks the money for possible future deployment. I could redeploy it in bonds when it matures, or I could just take the lump sum and put it in stocks like the Home Depot or Starbucks. I don't know where the, st the stock market's going to be in two years. It might be lower than where it is right now. And um, if it is, um, I have a treasury note that is maturing in two years, for example. I'll take the money from that and put it in stocks. Um, I love bonds, as I mentioned, that uh, mature during retirement years because they can be used to supplement dividend stocks uh, without having to sell dividend stocks. So selling dividend stocks is the worst thing ever. Now, um, dividend growth rates could slow. It could take longer for core stocks to achieve a yield on cost close to the 20-year treasury bond. And I think that's a really important nuance to mention to all of you because what's going to happen when interest rates go up? It's going to be harder for businesses to expand. The cost of capital is going to be harder. It's going to be more difficult for dividend stocks, dividend companies to service existing debt. And so uh, dividend growth rates are probably going to slow. We're seeing a lot of these dividend increases lately. They're coming in really high, but I just don't know if that will continue forever. And so I look at bonds as a hedge against that. Now, I have a few more things I want to share. As you can see on the screen in front of you right now, the next thing is just my experience. 
I, I ran actually an experiment with bills. Bills are basically government issued securities that have a maturity less than uh, one year or less. And the way those work is you basically go into the auction and at the end, uh, you, you know, once, once your money is called, it goes into the investment at the, in the end of the investment, you get it back, but they don't pay interest on an ongoing, uh, manner. The way it works basically is the, um, you put in a certain amount and at the end you get all, you get your principal plus all of the interest at the end. And I ran a little test just to see if it would work. I ran a four week test on the four week bill and my money came right out of my bank account and it was put right in back in my bank account at the end of the test. And so the test worked out really great. And that's another tool in uh, the investor's toolkit. If um, the investor wants to earmark money for future deployment in dividend stocks, bonds, or anything, doesn't know what to do with it right now, those bills, are really good short-term duration government securities. Notes and bonds, I have a portfolio with a laddered maturity date, but I'm really trying to wait that 20 year. I look at that as the sweet spot. I look at savings bonds as a separate type of investment. They're not cash flowing investments and um, they pay interest, but all of the interest is paid as a lump sum when they mature. And so those are more supplementary money for retirement. When those savings bonds mature uh, out, say, uh, 20, 30 years from now that I do own those I bonds, EE bonds, what I'll do is probably use them for a fun um, excursion or vacation during retirement. And I share my complete bond portfolio over on Corner Patreon. And so I hope you all enjoyed the video today. That's my number one favorite bond of all time right now. And I think I'm way more excited about this than most other people because no one is talking about it. Put in the comments below what you think about bonds right now and put in the comments below if you think our stock market is headed lower, what you think about the Home Depot, what you think about Starbucks and other core dividend stocks, I'm purchasing those as well. In terms of a full disclosure, I'm long the Home Depot, ticker HG. I'm long Starbucks, ticker SBUX. I'm also long all of the treasury bonds, notes, and bills mentioned today. I'm also long EE uh, savings bonds and I saving spawns as well. Before I go, in terms of a friendly disclaimer, today's video is not investment advice. I'm not a licensed investment advisor. Today's video is just for your fun and entertainment. If you're going to go out and invest in the stock market, bond market, or elsewhere, please consult your licensed financial advisor first. I'm just sharing my journey here on YouTube for fun and entertainment. It's possible to lose money in stocks, bonds, and investments. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you here from Idaho in the next dividend stock investing video. Whee!